Let me read a verse of scripture to you taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and a couple of verses from uh, verses 3 and 4. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And of course, the scripture tells us that we do not fight flesh and blood. We fight spiritual wickedness in high places. A little story about this, especially in this day when Christians feel quite uh, frantic, quite frustrated, and want to be involved somehow in fighting the forces of evil. And how do we do that? I think we need to understand that God's people are supposed to be militant, but we need to know who the enemy is. That we're not fighting people. They, they'd be a pushover compared to the battle we're fighting, but we are fighting spiritual wickedness. And we need spiritual weapons to do that. And the scripture says that we've been given those weapons. The panoply that God has provided in Ephesians chapter 6, and through prayer, we are able to pull down strongholds. Now, some people say prayer is not enough. But if you look at the story of Elijah, in neutralizing Ahab and Jezebel, it was through prayer. Not that we can't speak up for God. Of course we can. Elijah did that. But it was through prayer that God neutralized the forces of evil in that day. Same is true of Daniel. It was through prayer that Daniel actually brought these great empires, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, brought them to their knees through prayer. So God help us to understand we have tremendously powerful weapons. The weapons, however, are not fleshly. They are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And what are these strongholds? They are they are mind strongholds. That's, that's where the battle is today. It's not for territory. It's for the mind, the battle for the mind, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So that's where the battle is. Will people go along with the course of this world or will they bow their knees to the authority of Christ? By our example, we show the benefit of living in fellowship with Christ, in obedience to Christ. And by our lip, we testify to this. And through our prayers, we influence our world by the power of God as the Spirit works internally in people, bringing them to understand their need of a Savior and put their trust in Him. Now, many years ago, I was in the city of Toronto and had occasion to fellowship with a dear Christian there. He had been converted right at the beginning of the Second World War. And he was convinced this was a just war. And he had happily joined the army. And he would go into battle singing, Onward Christian Soldiers. Well, one day, as they were doing this mopping up operation through these villages in France, he came around the corner of a building with his gun at the ready and discovered that right in line with his gun, there was a young German soldier. And the German soldier looked at him and he said, I should have, I suppose, pulled the trigger, but I didn't. And I just looked at him and this young German lifted his hands up like this and said to him, Bruder, are you a brother? Are you a believer? There was something in his face. He could see the image of Christ. He could see that this man perhaps was a believer. And at that moment, this young Christian thought, what am I doing? Ready to blast this fellow believer into eternity. And he laid down his arms. He went back and uh, said, I'll work in the medical corps, but I can't do this anymore. Now, Christians have all different views about whether they should be involved in the military and to what degree and so on. That's not my point of the story. But the point of the story is this, that there is a battle to be fought. There is an enemy to be confronted. 
but we need to understand who that is. We do not fight flesh and blood. And the Lord Jesus, when he was asked if he, in fact, was an insurrectionist, that was the charge against him. And he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. So we are to fight. We are to be militant. We are to be equipped. We are to realize that this is a life and death struggle. But the battle is not as people would portray it on the evening news. It's not red versus blue. It's not conservative versus liberal. There's a much bigger battle at play here. And we are involved in the war. We are behind enemy lines. And we are seeking to convince people to lay down their weapons of war against the God of heaven and submit happily to the authority of Christ who presents his kingship in this beautiful way, he says, come to me and learn of me. My yoke is easy. That is his right to rule. My burden is light. I will not be a tyrant. You will find rest to your souls if you are willing to submit to my authority. May God bless each of you in these troubled times, and may you be a voice for peace from heaven, peace at such a time as this, calling on men and women to be reconciled to God, to lay down their arms of rebellion, and to receive the Prince of Peace as their personal Savior, for his namesake.